Hi there. I am Mrs. Sharon Reed, and I am the art director for the camp, the Arts of Work at St. Paul UCC here in Pekin. What do we mean when we say the Arts Work? Well, to us, that means that we greatly enhance our lives through knowledge of and participation in the arts. Whether you're reading a book, whether you're singing a song, whether you're playing a, an instrument, whether you are drawing or painting or watching TV, all of those things are the work of artists. So if you do any of those things, you love art too. And we'd like to see you participate in our camp, the Arts Work at St. Paul UCC, August 2nd through August 6th. We have a great time singing, dancing, painting, drawing, participating in special activities every day, like participating in a drum circle, playing world drums, learning to play the chimes, learning how to do all of those things, just learning what instruments are through a musical petting zoo. So we're looking forward to your participating with us in that camp August 2nd through August 6th. Parents, please know that we are keenly aware of everything that is going on that we can know about the pandemic and the variants thereof. We are making sure that we are socially distancing with your children inside, particularly when they have art and when they have music. And outside, we think that we can relax a little bit as the guidelines have told us. And we will be doing that, making sure that all children, all staff, and all volunteers will be safe during this camp. And we hope that you will want to participate with us and have some fun through the arts before you go back to school. Join us August 2nd through 6th at St. Paul United Church of Christ here in Pekin, August 2nd through August 6th. Please join us, check out our website, find out how to get registered. If you have questions, please contact us and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. We're looking forward to seeing you at the Arts Work at St. Paul UCC here in Pekin. Thank you. Welcome to this virtual worship service of St. Paul United Church of Christ. I am Forrest Frosty Crummel, the transitional and interim minister at this congregation. It is the hope and the prayer of myself and all the members of this congregation that in your time that you spend with us that you will find nurture for your spirits. Let us continue in the spirit of worship. worship comes from the prophet in Isaiah. The Lord invites all who are thirsty to come to the waters. If you have no money, come, eat of the bread of life. Come and buy wine and milk and eat of the bread. It will cost you nothing. Would you join me in the spirit of prayer? Our Lord God, in this time together in worship, May we hear the words that we need to hear. Speak to us your lessons of life. Plant the seeds of their truth in our hearts so that in our daily lives we can produce the fruit of the kingdom. In Christ's name we very humbly pray. Amen.
If we say that we have no sin, we deceive only ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, then God who is faithful will forgive us and restore us into our relationships with one another as well as with God. Would you join me in the spirit of uh, confession? Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. For we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us. Forgive us and renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and follow in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. The psalmist reminds us that as high as the heavens are above the earth, that is how far God removes our sin from us. As far as the east is from the west, that is how far God removes our transgressions. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Our scriptural lesson today comes from the gospel of St. John from the sixth chapter. Listen to these words that the gospel writer recorded for our consideration and contemplation. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the Sea of Galilee saw that there had been only one boat there. They also saw that Jesus had not got into the boat with the disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Then some of the boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten and the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. They found him on the other side of the Sea of Galilee, and they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is, was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it was my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. May God add understanding to the reading of that word. Amen. Would you join me in the spirit of prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable into your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. And may those things said that are true be engraved upon every heart, and anything said that is false be quickly forgotten and cause no harm. In your name we very humbly pray. Amen. Our text for today comes from that last verse that I shared with you in which Jesus said to his disciples, very truly I tell you, I am the bread of life. This past spring, my wife and I were doing some yard work with one of our grandsons. I was in the backyard and my wife was in the front yard hanging up some lights in preparation for Easter, some lights and some Easter eggs. We had an old five foot, uh, step ladder that we used from our first days of married life. My grandson was holding the base of the ladder so that it wouldn't be shaky as my wife climbed up the ladder. Being a very precocious young man, our grandson was reading the fine print on the edge of the ladder, the, the caution label. And then he said to my wife, Mimi, my wife is known as Mimi, Mimi, how much do you weigh? Somewhat surprised, my wife said, why do you ask? And my grandson said, because it says here that it does not support anyone who weighs over 200 pounds. 
My wife assured him that she was much less than 200 pounds. He thought about that for a while. Then he said to her, Mimi, Pop, I'm known as Pop, I'm the third generation Pop in my family. He said, Mimi, Pop had better not use this ladder because he's real close to 200 pounds. Oh, I wish that was not true. It was closer to the truth than what I wish to admit. I am losing the proverbial battle of the bulge like many people in America today. No doubt you've heard the old saying, the adage, you are what you eat, and it is true. Food is the fuel for our bodies. If you eat junk food, you will become a piece of junk. You will feel bad and look even worse. Eating good food is a step toward health and fitness. I read not too long ago that 90% of all of our ailments could be alleviated if we only ate properly and maintained an appropriate weight. Last week, I reflected with you upon Jesus' feeding of the 5,000. This week, the crowd that had been fed with the barley loaves and the few fish crossed the Sea of Galilee in search of the one who had fed them on that hillside. When they finally found him, Jesus asked them why they sought him. Was it because their bellies had been filled or were they seeking something else? There is deep in the human heart a gnawing hunger. It is a hunger for our lives to have purpose and meaning. About a year ago, I joined a program called Noom, trying to get control of my weight, setting goals, because I realized long ago in the words of the Apostle Paul that while the spirit may be willing, the flesh is indeed weak. I put inches around my waist and my grandson innocently called me out on the steps of a wooden stepladder. And I learned in this program, at one level, most of our difficulty, most of the reason that we are losing the battle of the bulge is not because we lack the willpower, but that we are trying to meet some unmet hunger. We eat out of boredom, or out of a sense of reward, or entitlement, or habit, or to soothe a wounded spirit when we had a bad day, or any other number of things. But we do not always eat because we are hungry, but because we're trying to fill a void. I believe that Jesus knew this, and that is why he noted it one time in a different gospel that we do not live by bread alone. We have a God-sized hole in our the heart of our soul. And Jesus said to those who were seeking him in John's gospel, I am the bread of life. I am the one who can give your life meaning. I am the one that can fill that hole that is in the heart of your soul. Those who were seeking Jesus asked him to give them that bread and ask what they must do. And Jesus replied, saying, you must believe in the one whom God has sent. To believe in the one whom God has sent means that we are willing to embrace, to eat of the fruit of the body of Christ, that we are to digest Christ into our own lives. As the Apostle Paul said, we are not conformed to this world, but rather we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. Each day, in small ways, we are being transformed more and more into the image of Christ, the resurrected one. We are hungry because we hunger for justice and for a fair world. We are hungry for righteousness that flows like an ever-flowing stream. And we work toward meeting that hunger by taking care of the least, the last, the lost, the lonely, the forgotten, and the forsaken. 
And we do all these things not so that people will say what a great person we are, but we do all these things because we have decided to take Jesus seriously, that we have decided to become disciples, that we have decided to walk in the steps of the dust of the rabbi Jesus. For when we do decide to do so, we find that we are tasting that sweet bread of life, that life that gives us meaning, the sweet bread that lives on into eternity. It is my hope and prayer that this week you will take time to engage in the spiritual disciplines that will feed that and fill that empty place in our own hearts by participating in worship and prayer and fellowship. May God bless you. To God be the glory both now and forevermore. Amen. Would you join me in a spirit of prayer? Eternal God, it is you who created the heavens and the earth and gave breath to every living creature. And we thank you for all the gifts of creation and for the gift of life itself. We thank you for making us in your own image and for forgiving us when we act as though you have no claim upon us and for keeping us in your steadfast care. We rejoice in Jesus Christ, the bread of life, the only one who is eternally begotten by you, who was born of Mary and Joseph and shared the joys and sorrows of life just as we know them. We remember Christ's death and celebrate Christ's resurrection in the beloved community of your church and we wait for Christ's return at the end of history. We take courage from the abiding presence of your Holy Spirit in our hearts and we offer to you praise for women and men of every faith and in every age who stand as witnesses to your great love and justice. Lord God, search our hearts and hear all of our various and sundry prayers, spoken or silent. Answer these prayers according to your will, but most importantly, make us perceptive to your will as we go about the living of our lives. All of these things we pray in the name of Jesus, whom we know to be the Christ. Amen. I charge each and every one of you to go out into this world and return no one evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but learn how to love and forgive one another as freely as God in Christ has loved and forgiven you. And may the love of God that will never let you go, the peace of Christ that passes all human understanding, 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that knits us together as the body of Christ here on earth be with you today, tomorrow, and every day of your life. Amen.